Alrighty, we are back with another technique tutorial. In the last couple of weeks I talked about the ankle technique, the seat height I recommend, the pedal settings, the distance from your drum stool to your pedals and all of that kind of stuff. But as you know at the Drum Technique Academy we got different teachers with different techniques. And so today I want to start this kind of new series where I talk about different teachers and the kind of stuff that they do and the techniques they use to get the desired results, which is tight double bass and fast blast beats. So today I want to talk about my fellow Austrian drummer Kerim Lechner aka Krim. So the short clip you're gonna see right now is from his last Facebook Live lesson at the Drum Technique Academy and this short sequence deals with the topic of seat height. Enjoy! It has changed also a little bit over the time. Um, I've tried different things, I've tried to sit higher but some drummers really almost stand up, this never worked for me, <laughs> yeah. never. Like old school behemoth, uh, mm -hmm. Inferno style where he would like, let's play. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that it would yeah. not work for me. Um, I've tried uh, 90 degrees, it also does not work for me. Mm -hmm. And I must say that um, because of playing on different drum kits and different chairs all the time, it's changed a slightly bit. But definitely I would be over the 90 degrees just a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do sit a bit further away or let's say I will never have uh, the how to say that the point the ball of the foot right underneath underneath the knee. your knee yeah yep. so it's always forward you know mm -hmm. um and that's why you should really f try to sit down behind the kid feel comfortable play a little bit and if you feel like uh, you lose balance on the chair yeah then it's for me an indication that you sit wrong like either too high or uh, too low try to find the sweet spot just a little bit over um, 90 degrees mm -hmm. This is my opinion that it's like the combo out of both worlds, the best. When I sit lower, I have more power out of my legs. It's, it's slower stuff. Sometimes I feel when I sit higher, it's faster stuff where I have to use more of the ankle. It's easy for me to kind of lift the whole leg to get more freedom of yeah. the ankle. Um, but yeah, it has been probably, this is the position that I will always go to. Alrighty, important takeaways from this clip. Um, Krim's knee joints are always lower than his hip joints. That's the first thing he mentioned. Second big topic is that his ankles are never located right below his knee, so he always got the more than 90 degree angle between upper leg and lower leg. And the final thing that's important that he just mentioned is that if he sits lower than this, then he gets a bit more power out of his double bass. And if he sits higher, it's a bit easier to play the faster stuff. It's easier to lift his legs and his ankles can move more freely. So now we're going to check out another clip from this Facebook Live lesson where Kerim talks about his foot technique at low, mid and up tempos. I really try to push a lot from the full leg. I want powerful sounds, so I really like step into this pedal as I can, yeah? So we go a bit up. Now the motion will have to change a bit. I still try to push harder, but I kind of try to push with my heels in the ground, yes? And try to really push more or less with the back into it, you know, just to get more power into it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we go up and then I will try to incorporate the ankle more, even mm -hmm. probably swivel. But let's, let's do first the ankle. Feels like I'm pushing more in the front down, yeah? Still try to get a loud motion out of it, try to be always relaxed. And just, it also helps me if I have kind of bounce in this groove I want to play, yeah? And faster I would probably start to do this with yeah? yeah. So I'm not gonna go into detail too much, 
if you just want to see the full lesson sign up at the Drum Tiger Academy. One thing that was really interesting is the thing that uh, Kerry mentioned at the mid tempos that basically he's not focusing on pushing down the front part of his foot. No, he's, he's focusing on pushing down with his heels, basically the flat foot technique. That's a really interesting detail that you have to keep in mind. And now on to the third topic for today where Karim talks about the starting and stopping position when it comes to double bass drumming. I want to really make sure that the starting of a double kick pattern, it has to be from the first hit, it has to be tight and it has to be okay loud. For me it's more important that it's tight, you know, because it, for me it sounds like as if he just doesn't also have control over it. And what you're going to practice is just the start of a kick drum pattern. We're not going for stamina, so we, we try to find a tempo where you're comfortable with, not go crazy, yeah, a little bit go down, and then we just gradually put more and more strokes into it. So we play like... Really focus on the start and the stop motion. How should it sound? Delop, 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 and then. Also, have a pretension. Some people rest always the beater against the skin. I don't. But when you will look closely at this exercise, what will happen? My feet are like the beater is going forward as if you pull um, the trigger back. No, the hammer back on the yep. pistol. Pop. Mm -hmm. Pop. Same here. And this is what really can help you. And then you pra practice just this and you just always add a little bit more. so on and so on. But if you have problems with the first strokes, doesn't make sense to play a 10 minute stamina workout. Better to, you know, uh, try to focus on your weaknesses, like try to get rid of them and practice them. And if you still have issues with the speed, go even slower, you know, it's not a problem. Watch the pretension. So big takeaway here, actually, you know, Kerim at higher tempos, he's using the swivel technique, but actually when it comes to the starting and stopping position, he's doing the exact same thing that I recommend and I use the ankle technique, which is you need a little bit of pretension. So you need to apply pressure to the footboard before you start a double bass pattern. So actually there's a pretension there. The beater stops right before the bass drum head. It's not totally buried against the bass drum head. No, it stops right before the bass drum head, pre-tension, and then for the first stroke, he swings the beater back and then starts to play double bass. Alrighty, and that's it for today's technique tutorial. For the full Facebook live lesson with Kerim, actually I think we've done three already, just sign up at www.drumtechniqueacademy.net. You can find all three tutorial videos in our closed Facebook group. If you got any further questions, just comment below. If you want my personal feedback, just sign up at the Drum Technique Academy. And that's it for today. Have a great day. Cheers from Vienna. Bye-bye.